welcome, welcome. Hi. Hi Liz. How, How are you? Are you? I'm good. Pretty How good. are you? I think we have a little delay, tiny delay. Hopefully that catches up. Is it still on my side? I think just a tiny bit, but people can tell us as we go if it if it happens, we can try to just give a little bit of space between when we talk so that we don't accidentally talk over each other if it's happening. Um, how are you doing today? We're having our weekly check-in. After this, we have uh, the Elvis cam going live. And I have heard from a lot of sweet people that they actually just like having Elvis on throughout the night because they watch him and he looks so cozy and cuddly and it's kind of like it's because he's the perfect little dog. I mean, most people would not describe him that way because he's not kid friendly. He's not, um, he's a biter. <laughs> Here's his skin. Um, will show vicious teeth for quite a while. Um, has been traumatized, has cancer, has um, three legs. <laughs> so I think he's the perfect dog and I love that you think he's the perfect dog, but tell them what you thought when you met him, please. Before uh, he, he knew was, you. That he was Sid Vicious and a biter. <laughs> like that's the best way to explain it. Like when you first, when you first meet this amazingly cute dog, it's... <laughs> And then all of a sudden he warms up and he's like the best dog ever. <laughs> yeah, he loves love. Yes. <laughs> and he, he is definitely your dog. You know, I am a, um, with Lexi, Lexi, lay down, please. She's making, oh, somebody wanted to say hi real quick. Oh, sorry. Let me um hide these little things because they're blocking a very, very important guest. <laughs> Hi, buddy. I'm you pretty sure. You're being sweet. Mm hmm I don't think he's going anywhere. Um, so he, I'm what my rescue partners in my group refer to as the foster mama supreme because I have an uncanny ability to like love the dogs whole from these really horribly abusive situations and then give them away. And most people we call foster failures because they end up keeping the dog and then we don't have a foster anymore because then they have a dog. Um, I have my own dogs, but I always keep a dog space open because my dogs are so, so good at teaching other dogs how to dog and giving them confidence to run with the pack. You've seen Elvis with Lexi. He's like uh -huh. so much stronger next to her, but he also thinks he's bigger than her. I don't know what's going on with his, uh, his brain, but he's been thrown. I think he's been thrown because he came to me and his leg was um, broken in three places and healed. And he was just dragging it around. Did you meet him before his surgery or after, Liz? No, I met him when he was a tripod. Yeah, okay. So he was still getting used to his tripod life. But when I first met him, it was so, so sad. And then he was mad at me because I had, you know, medical stuff to give him. Um, and he didn't feel good. But he's learned to trust me. And he loves love now. He wakes me up with kisses and stuff. And if you watch him in his bed, he'll be like so cozy and there's nothing more um comforting than knowing the story of a little guy who just was abandoned and then broken and physically hurt and abused and he actually has like brain problems his vet said because of his response like how he tries to bite still when he wants love but we're doing a lot of behavioral therapy with him like for animals and it's working. So I get called the foster mama supreme because I get these really hard cases and I've been able to let them go. But Liz, we've been through so much in this period of time. This dog has been with me now for quite a while. He's kicked cancer's butt. Um, I also wanted to offer, we have some donation um, stickers uh for elvis presley that we had made up for his cancer and it's a bad word on there so i'll just cover it but um that's the sticker 
and uh, he has a lot of medical expenses. So if anybody would like to send him funds to the rescue, um, all of us are volunteers. Nobody takes a paycheck in there. So if you want to Venmo it, I can label it or we can put it directly to the rescue Venmo for Elvis because he will, that's probably better. We'll do just the rescue Venmo. I'll put it in the chat or in the link. You guys just um, write for Elvis Presley, the Chihuahua, and it'll go straight to his medical funds if anybody wants to contribute because the rescue pays for his incredible food and stuff. So he's been a foster, but um, I think you're right. Yep. He's been through too much with us and he like, he just loves love so much more and he's just a perfect little guy. He's so spicy and sassy, you know? I wonder where he gets that from. I don't know. Where do you think, Carrie? Do you think Carrie birthed him? No. But I mean on <laughs> the personality. close though. <laughs> on on personality wise, it's yeah. He's just like a glove when it comes to you guys. This is a this is a good one. In my line of work, 90% of bites I've gotten were all fear responses. Yeah. It tends to be that way. That's kind of the saddest part is walking at the shelter and seeing the dogs who aren't going to be able to be helped because we, one, don't have enough homes. And two, it's hard enough to get a three-legged, adorable, grumpy guy who's three and a half, now five pounds versus, you know, not everybody can just pick up a 150-pound dog that has been, you know, scared of life for a long time. True. So we do what we can. We get the little Elvises. We work with them. Um, I've had larger dogs. I tend to do larger dog puppies. You love your Husky. Yes, my great Bambino. How does Bambino help your mental health? Um, when I was at the lowest of low, so like at the, the depths, of a really bad breakup. It was like my heart and soul got sunk into that dog hmm. and getting through it and then finding certain medical conditions and things like that. It was, yeah, I can tell you many of times that that dog saved my life. The support, the unconditional love, the looking at you like you can do no wrong. We don't deserve dogs. I swear. <laughs> there are times, yes. Yeah. They're they're a lot of work, but they're worth it. I used to be a cat cat person. I'd say cats rule, dogs drool, but I have an appreciation for both very deeply now. What about you? Um never really been a cat person. Uh I like all animals, but never really thought of myself as a cat, like, oh, I'm gonna be a cat owner. Um yeah. I always wanted dogs, but then like mm -hmm. I would see houses that had one of each and I'm like, oh, that would have been cute. Damn it. But at the same time, it's like. <laughs> it's not always as cute as we think. It's, it's not be. always Sometimes as cute. It's, it's like cats and dogs. Yeah, because Bambino around cats right now is. Yeah. Um. Totally. Hi, I'm just reading the chats. Everybody is fun is here. All Good. of our homies. Marilyn's here. Tommy's here. Pup groomer. Retired red. Hi, everybody. These are all the night folks. Yes, all the folks that um, are either in our like our local time zones or wait a minute. I think I think one of them lived near Florida. I remember right but thank you all for for being here yeah it's really nice to have the support so what's on your mind tonight for our weekly check-in i had a emotional response to the mitch brisker aaron live the other night have you had an emotional response to any lives lately um, <laughs> i Technically, I'd never thought about it before. Um, like I'd never, um, I 
I don't know how to word it to to sound proper, but um, I realized that when I was, so when I first got out of the Sea Org area and going to school at the craft schools and stuff like that, not realizing that I didn't have any knowledge of anything. Because when I when I first came up here to a to a public school, it was my first. It was my very first, and nothing made sense. And I remember having to work like three times as hard as everybody else to understand things, and then to get special tutors so that I would understand the history that I was reading, the, you know, normal stuff that either kids go through on the outside, like their parents tell them history stories or, or stories. Cause we knew nothing. And I just remember thinking I was a blank canvas while in school in Scientology schools, I was a blank canvas because you don't, you're not taught everything. You're taught basic math, um, kinda how to read, but not really. And then you're not taught a lot of history. Which school? I mean, I know which for you, but there's actually different ones on the public. So I want to be specific because we, these are things that get thrown back in our faces. And... Um, which school did I attend before? Yeah. I, I don't mean, know the name of it. Schools had, you know, like the Nielsen Academy had like, uh, that was nine to 12, right? And so we just did the very basics to get the GED. But at Delphi, I went 8.30 to 5 p.m. And there was a heavy, heavy curriculum along with other people who were going to Renaissance and all that. It was just chosen curriculum, which I think is an also important part. It's which they want to present. So we did a lot of studying. We knew how to um, succeed in Scientology world. <laughs> yeah. But like the second you start saying, wait, is that true? Um, cause they're making it secular. Um, it just gets weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my mom used to tell me that I went to Delphi as a kid. Um, but when you went to the campus and showed that live, that didn't look familiar. Um, all I remember is a two-story building. And then, so it had like a like an L shape to the building. And then it had a mm -hmm. little tiny walkway to like mm -hmm. a big playground area. And mm -hmm. that's all I remember of the school. Well, but I, I remember the like first one. a lot one. of schools. It could be a lot of them. But there were Delphi's in other areas too. I mean, was it in LA that she said specifically? Because I went to a school called Apple School that used to be... Uh, called apple school and it was on a really cool complex in san diego and then delphi um it got changed to a delphi and that sounds like the one you were describing but it's not la la no we didn't get our rides were basic our rides were la because it was literally like 40 minutes to get there from pack base mm. I think that you went to like Hogs Hollow or Pinewood and that was on the lower campus and we didn't even end up walking the lower campus. That was down by the field and the playground. So okay. I think that was probably correct. You did go there, but you're not recognizing it because of that. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's only so many, you know, honestly, yeah. that are like about 40 minutes from pack. Like, mm, <laughs> odds are, right? Um. But yeah, so you felt like you were a sponge after? Yeah. Like I I felt void of all of this information. Like, so I go into fourth grade. Now, mind you, my this is my first public school. And so my first public school, I walk in. The woman introduces me as, hi class, this is Elizabeth. 
she's been in a cult. That's how the teacher introduced me. So me not she knowing the, the cat out of the bag on day one. That's how she introduced me. And I'm like, I don't know what the word cult means. I, I really am not understanding what's happening and why you're telling people I'm from this thing. Yeah. And so at lunchtime, I left. I just walked away, <laughs> walked back to my grandma's house. Didn't know you couldn't leave school without permission either, guys. Sorry. Um, so I walked home and I told my mom what happened. And I asked her if she could help me find the definition of cult. My mom then drove to the school, had a very nice conversation with, was my teacher for like the shortest period possible. And I was expelled the next day. So got to then spend almost another year at home, not being educated, um, had to redo, had to re, let's try this again, redo fourth grade, and then was finally taught how to read. It didn't when? dawn on me. Like I was, I was taught to read in fourth grade. And who, who was it? Do you remember? I had a special teacher that was brought into the school so that I could learn how to read. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, that's honestly really cool, though, but it is embarrassing. Yeah, it's, it sucks because at the yeah. same time, you hand me a dictionary and you hand me a list of words. I can write down word for I will find it so bloody fast. It'll be like. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was super, once I understood where I was comparison to everybody else, it sucked. And then once I learned how to read, you couldn't stop me from reading everything. And I would grab a hold of every history book I can find. I grabbed a hold of, you know, science, biology, you know, and I loved it. Absolutely loved school. It was the coolest thing that was part of my life. Um, but, you know, I didn't realize that if I had stayed in that situation that I may not have a background in history. Um, I may not have a background in science or math or, and I, that, that to me is like what got me through a lot of bad times in my life. If that makes sense. I always had books. Books could never hurt you. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope that makes, you know, what that helps everything make sense. I became a straight A student. Um, I wanted to read anything and everything. I was the definition of a nerd, but I just happened to like sports, <laughs> but I became an absolute nerd. There's no um, prototype of like human being. I think we're all just a different blend of our genetics and our environment and whatever is um, our calling to some degree and whatever inspires us and is uh, like flips our switch, you know, whatever makes us excited. I get excited to learn and I get excited to share that education. Um, my dad was really, really smart in that he made an offer that at Delphi, it was a really hard private school, but it was open to the public. So it wasn't just Scientology. They did have to have um, not legally licensed teachers or anything like that or social workers, but they had um, general curriculum to talk about. And they did have success getting people into um, colleges. So my father was really smart and he said, I'll give you $50 every time you get on a roll and $100 for Dean's List. And it was just 
such a nice early developmental game for me to just like do good at school and then I had to stand up on stage and accept it but I always did and I was still not um I was able to hang out with like the cool kids who were hilarious but also be a nerd and I think sometimes life is about just making our own lane and it can feel really really uncomfortable sometimes because we're not Mm -hmm. fitting in that category of what people expect but we're very unique individuals and Liz you've been through so much that I'm sure you were like a sponge and I was like a sponge too. And I had to trust other people's viewpoints for a long time if I thought they were smarter than me until I found out a lot more about a lot of things because I was required to. Um, and then things finally made sense. And, yeah. And then it all It's like the sense. pieces started to fit. Yeah. And then, um, you know, they have unofficial views on a lot of things that are just deep in our culture um about you know government and conspiracy theory and all of these um beliefs that you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. you want to re- remain kind of neutral but sometimes it's like a pinball and you just want to go to the complete other side and then you kind of have to make your way back to the middle ground i feel like with most people um leaving scientology it's really really a challenge and then the more time that goes on we can process our feelings and learn new words to explain them and then learn the history of what happened while we were in a cult because we were always in a bubble so um once we learn that we do tend to get offended when people question it if it's not matching up with whatever our reality is our view on reality afterwards because that's a really tough button for us when we were always gaslighted and told what reality was you know yeah because we'd be told one story and that was gospel and yeah I remember that to my core that feeling just where you have to shut off because you're just done listening but they're not done talking correct You're like, is this person um, seeing my body language? Are they like dense? Or are they just really trying to get their calm across and then have me act them? Yep, we got to acknowledge. I like when I make your butthole clench on camera because it's like an old um, thing that my mother would say. Slides out sometimes, just like your mother would say. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like okay I gotta tell you a story about my mom today please so I it's totally gonna be off topic but it's probably gonna be one of those situations so I've given up on the idea of my mom ever crossing over to the correct side I just okay. I've given up my mom today says I just heard a story that David Miscavige is is saying that all of the people that went clear during uh, Dianetics are not really clear. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, I just heard a story. Is that true? And I was like, I really don't want to talk about Scientology with you because it's going to end either good or bad. And so she's like, I just need to know if that's true. And I'm like, and so I left. The whole way, all I could think of was, this woman's nuts. Like, I'm never going to be able to wake her up because she just needs to know if he's ruining the tech. And I realized in that drive, I was like, I I don't know how to wake her up. And I don't know if she's ever going to wake up. And if I can't get my mom to wake up, how am I going to get my dad? Well, they're different people. Yeah, I think one doesn't believe anymore and one is going to believe till her dying day. Yeah, I think your dad's already awake, to be quite honest, with the blow drill happening. Um That's what I think. We don't know. We won't know, right? Until we know. But we can't assume. 
Um, we just got to try whatever you got to do to figure it out. And then you can either close that chapter and love him from a distance and, or you can make a new choice, you know, but you just yep. need information. You haven't even been able to speak to him or verify really that it's him. And it's disappointing. Yeah. There's, there's times that I just wanted to call the number and just ask, you know, and then I'm like, okay, why not? Why not do that? Um, Cause we know, you know, we know not a little bit, but then it's like, it will I ruin something if I if I do this? Like, will the number be changed? You know, you're not responsible for him or what they do. But I know the feeling, and I have to say it so that your ears hear it. But let it flow because we had so much of that on our shoulders of worrying about how the situation was going to go and what your choice meant for somebody else and you're not your dad's parent you know he's the parent here and he's making his choice out of free will um apparently but i don't really think that and that's why we're yeah. doing what we're doing right so we're not doing anything illegal <laughs> we're just no trying we're to not get your dad's scene and um have a conversation with him so don't try to take on more weight please than you deserve because you're doing so much already i know i'm being loud i'm being proud okay now all of a sudden loud and proud i'm thinking something else i got an email today that was like the funniest thing i'd ever heard or it was a <laughs> message someone asked me when i get to la do i have a bullhorn okay i'm like no, I, I, I don't. Um, should I get a bullhorn? Like, no, I, no, I don't. And so I'm like, my response was, I'm just really loud and I'm going to scream until I have no voice. I don't, I, I don't understand. I think you'd like a bullhorn. Cause when I was there, I was like, dude, the bullhorn is killing it right now. Um, it really added a certain amount of drama to the vibe. And then you also have a, uh, a show that people listen to as a podcast. So when we speak all day, our voices become raspy and I feel horrible because I'm constantly talking on the phone all day, but I don't think you got to waste your voice. Get that megaphone. Oh, all right. I'll look into it. I, put, I mean, there's going to be people with bullhorns and you're going to have a sign. Um, you can scream as loud as you want, whatever makes you happy, honestly. But they're going to be, uh, seems like a lot of people there. There was only me and Lara and then some supporters that we had never met from the women's channel when we went before. Um, okay. So it seems like a ton of people are going to be there. And, yeah, we have. A, I've gotten quite a few emails where people are like, "I'm going, I'm going," and I'm like, "Thank you, that is bleeping awesome." <laughs> That's the block I grew up on. I mean, I don't know. It's weird to me. Like, I'd I'd like to be there too, but also I'm like, you know, I'm there all the time. I drive by. I work in the neighborhood. I wish I could be with you guys doing that as a group because I think that's really what's the fun part. But um, I'll be out of town doing something that is in place of um, church for me since I left Scientology, which is um, music. And I'm going to the While We Were Young Festival. And there's really incredible bands that um, actually helped me get out of Scientology through punk rock and um learning that culture so i'm stoked we're gonna have a blast and probably not gonna have as much terror and fear as you guys do you're gonna have some tough tough cookies there with you some tough men and women i hear so yeah um you'll be that, safe 
Yes, but you. I'm also really proud that you're still going to your event because mm -hmm. you have to take time for you. Yeah, thank you. If you yeah, don't take time for friends. you, then we're not going to be able to keep doing this. Just like I will have, I'm doing this for me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's some, something we all need. Um, but right now this is what my need is. For me to take time for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. For us to take time for what we need. Okay. I, I agree. Let's um let's all do a little self care this week and start by getting up um in the morning. The first second you get up and you put your feet down on the floor, your diurnal slope of stress cortisol is actually the highest. It's the best time to get stuff done. It goes in different shapes throughout the day, but there's a general direction of exciting uh endorphin type things that happen and if we can utilize that when you get up and go to the bathroom that's what it is for me i'm like have a hard time i'll get up and go to the bathroom and then i'll want to get back in bed and cuddle the dogs and i'll kind of waste that morning oomph so maybe that's my challenge because i feel like i have so much to get done lately that it's hard to kind of just start getting going first thing but i know that's how we do it and then we can get more done for ourselves, like take little vacays because we've got our YouTubes organized so well that we just yeah. are allowed to do those kinds of things in our own very minds because we've organized. <laughs> yes, because I liked getting organized. It helped me quite a bit. Yeah, you know, everything's set up all pretty. Well, that's primarily her. Let's be real. Oh my gosh, your wife's partner's pantry. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> right? Tell, There's I mean, everything there. Can I describe why? I don't know if this Absolutely. is like embarrassing or not, but like, I don't know. There's something about just having so many snacks around that are so yummy and Carrie and I have like really similar and probably Liz too, because we're all eating the same thing when we're there, but she has all these really specific snacks that I love, like um, things that only I buy for myself, like the brown sugar pop tarts or like certain types of cheesy wisps or things like that, that I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most stocked pantry other than the Doring family, which is their really rich um <laughs> and they were Scientologists but um this one is the best pantry I've ever been in and I was like didn't find it until about one day through and I was like wait this is in here there's snacks mm -hmm. in here? and um it was incredible and then I lived in there and I uh, ate everything like little hungry squirrel running through the house at night and it's totally okay because you know what? She will always keep that pantry stocked. Did you ever with use the zone I accidentally left you? I I think I did, but <laughs> don't quote me on that. I don't know what I did like yesterday. Well, understandable. You're on SPTV now, you know? Mm-hmm. It I never like I did. Okay, so I did the the two lives on Tuesday, one with you and then one with with Nora Nora. Wow, I'm having a speech day. Um, I didn't realize how much it really takes out of a person to actually just sit there and ex just explain everything that's going on everything in your life, whether emotional, non emotional, anything like that. And then all of a sudden, I'm tired like yeah but it's it feels so good to let it out and let everybody know what's going on but at the same time it's almost like you're giving all this information and it's relaxing yeah and your body can finally relax yeah it's a it's a balance when you're dealing with trauma 
and you're really staring it in the face, um, some people don't do it that often. You're doing lives um, at least once a day, it seems like, to do this all for your father. Uh-huh. And it's really beautiful, but we got to make sure, too, that we balance that intense emotional load with really fun things and things that bring you joy and unfortunately lately we've just not had the time (laughs) like I know that you get joy when you're home with your family and I'm just Mm -hmm. really grateful that you have that to come home to right Um, it's really beautiful and you get to just you know relax and watch a movie or you did I still didn't see Barbie in the theater we were supposed to see that is it gone or what We've watched it. No, I know you guys did. I didn't, but I want to see it in the theater. I don't think it's in the theater anymore. Sorry. Rats. <laughs> but <laughs> okay. you are more than welcome to come up here and watch it with us anytime. You know, the missus absolutely loves it. The movie? Mm-hmm. I've heard nothing but really good things and that they have weaved different fairy tales in and that there's a very strong Wizard of Oz theme, which is another one of my favorites. Yeah, you have, you definitely, it's cute. It's cute. There's a couple parts where I'm sitting there like, what, what am I watching? Okay. And then all of a sudden you're like, you just hooked. I love it. I love, um, so far I've loved every visual I've seen from it and I love the concept of it. And, you know, one year Santa brought me a Barbie car and it was the best Christmas I ever had. So we will, uh, be going out to the theater. If it's still there, I will be going soon to see it. Cause I know it's a visual masterpiece. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, you have to watch it. It's, I didn't oh, yeah. think I was going to be a big fan of it. Really Maybe didn't. that one um, in Eagle Rock, Whistleblowing Good Witch, it should be at the Cheap Seats Theater now. Yeah, there used to be this really cool one on uh, Eagle Rock Mall. I went and saw American Beauty for like $2. Um, <laughs> okay. Maybe something like that. Um, <laughs> this is funny. My choice of self-care tonight was supposed to be ice cream, but my dad won't be going out tonight, so I'm thinking about raiding his barbecue potato chips. Good choice. Good choice. I prefer the sour cream and onions. As a person who works with people and I talk to them about self-care, I have to point out that eating healthy is actually an act of self-care. So maybe try, I mean, you know, treat yourself, treat yourself, but maybe self-care is like making a huge salad that you actually like, I hate to say it. I got to do the same. I'm the worst at it, but acts like that, that can make our brain function better during the daytime, like make our lives actually easier just make sure we're getting nutrients because we're just like plants that need food and sunlight and water and everything we're not getting nutrients we're just not firing at 100 you know absolutely i know that i've i've doubled up on making sure i eat breakfast lunch and dinner good and i've made them much much healthier oh um, cause I'm really trying to, you know, lose weight for Denver. <laughs> you look like the pounds are actually dropping off of you. Have you already lost weight? Um, I've lost a pound after all of the changing of eating habits and craving. Yeah. And only doing two rock stars a day. I think I have to drop down to one rock star a day. I never thought I'd hear the day that Liz Ferris would say that about rock stars. I know. I got to figure out something. Do not understand this addiction. (laughs) It's not an addiction. (laughs) I just need to go to black coffee or something. Have they um, 
ever spent a weekend with you and your partner on the wild west <laughs> coast? <laughs> Babe, you got the rock star? Babe, no, I got the rock star. Babe, what flavor do you got? Babe, you got this flavor? Babe, how many rock stars did you bring? <laughs> it's like a click, click, click. All right, so it might so be a healthy. little bit of an addiction. It might be a little bit of an addiction. Great. Now I'm going to have to go to Rockstar Anonymous. Yeah, Rockstar Anonymous. Um, we were just talking about this. Have you seen the movie My Girl? Mm hmm Yeah? Yeah. Um, it was one of my favorite movies when I was younger, but I've actually, like, I think I saw the ending one time and I cried so, so, so hard. And it gave me my paranoia bee stings forever. <laughs> Heck yeah. but, um, Macaulay Culkin I'm... died so. Oh, man. I know. It's sad. But I'm going to try to watch it. Um, and Tommy was talking about maybe playing it on his channel or something. They were talking about that over there. He said, still have not seen it. It's a tough one. Ooh, um, my bad. Sorry. Sorry, life. Yeah. Part. She just ruined a, <laughs> you know, little part of it for her big uh big italian brother um <laughs> but that's okay we kind of know what the ending happens and also i don't ever want to watch bambi thank you when i was a child i like took it out of the vcr and destroyed it i was like this is the worst ending ever bambi got ruined um, uh -huh. and get this i took uh my clients out for a hike about a month ago and one of them has the best view i or like a uh, vision i've ever seen and he spotted a toad like crossing the pi uh, path and all these things and he goes man i wish i had a rifle and he looked at me and i'm like you know one of his closest confidants and supportive people there so he looks at me and i went oh, what and he like just saw the look on my face and he went you don't like that and i said no it's like haven't you ever seen bambi and he was like I have seen Bambi. I'm so, so, so sorry. And then you know what was really sweet is that every time I see him, he brings it up. And he's like, hey, I'm really sorry about that comment about the gun. I just still feel really sorry about it. And I was like, it's okay. I just, I'm really sensitive. And I just think of Bambi. So it's no big deal. I understand that you have your preferences and I have mine, but um you know it's just kind that he even cared you know because he noticed Absolutely. that he like it was just the only thing he had really heard me say like wait you what because it was like we were just seeing these wildlife these really sweet animals i couldn't understand that but people's cultures are different they like to hunt and you know all of the different things that just like us we're sensitive to some things that other people aren't right yep each one of us is sensitive in certain areas yeah for sure because didn't you when zeus found the lizard didn't you say oh yeah you wanted us to to stop the lizard and yeah sorry well the you're talking about the lizard again there were two murders in Liz's backyard by Elvis <laughs> Presley the Chihuahua and we did not know that he likes violence so much until <laughs> we met up with some lizards in NorCal and um, I had to come into him eating them and then you and <laughs> I murdered a cockroach doing the cucaracha dance oh well that that's nothing compared to the actual munching of the lizard. Like the lie, <laughs> like it was, it could, it just forfeited its life. And you were like, oh, it's fine. The dogs shake them in their mouth and smack them on the ground all the time. And I was like, <gasps> like I was so sensitive, but I get it. It's just nature. But you know, I'm nurture sometimes <laughs> over nature. It's not healthy. But hey, look. We got this guy coming up on the camera soon. Oh, did we get the girl? Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. You're the cutest little tripod. Hi, baby. <laughs> <laughs> See? He has a little brain problem. Hi, baby. It's okay. 
He just doesn't like um anything. He has a little bit of a sight thing in his eye, too. So he doesn't like getting, you know, scared. None of us do. Now he's being a cuddle, cuddly man. He's about to get ready for camera, though. Did you um have anything you wanted to say, Liz, before we, like, wrap it up? I want to get Elvis set up. We just wanted to do our little peer check-in tonight, make sure everybody was... Um, you know, knows we're going to be here every Thursday night about six, between six or seven, we'll be here. So we hope to see you guys soon. Anything you want to get off your chest, Liz? Um, you know, the normal stuff. Be nice to everybody in the comments. Remember, we're all human. Um, don't forget to tape your wa tip your waiter or waitress. And um, that's it. And we believe in the power of empowerment. So yes, let's try to empower each other this week and have power with instead of power over. And I think that everything will work out just fine. Absolutely. Because again, mm -hmm. we're, we're doing every step by step. Yeah. One day at a time, folks, peer support, you know what you know what to do help your friends when you can but this week i think we should all have the challenge of taking care of ourselves a little bit better and we can talk about that and how that went this week when we hit hit up each other next week i'll be listening to a lot of frank sinatra i have a lot of songs that kind of put me in happy moods i used to listen to it with my grandmother all the time dance around the house so some of those kinds of songs just make your soul happy you know yep <laughs> and i I don't don't know plans for Friday, but Saturday I do have a live with Amy. Oh, cool. That'll be fun. I know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of it it yeah. It's exciting. She's really Right. Sweet. Yeah. It's like um the reason it's like it's it's <laughs> a little funny just because when I was at CC, I feared her name. Like I feared her name. But now knowing her as a person, I'm like, man, I wish I'd known she was super sweet back then. But at the same time, it's, she's an amazing person. And maybe she wasn't allowed to express how fully sweet she was then because of the circumstance. Yep. I know I did. I, I was mean to people and I'm working on forgiveness. Good. I I am too. And it's um sometimes hard to, you know, like they say, I had a lot of people say to me, just forgive. You're walking around with hate in your heart. It's only hurting you. And um sometimes when people just speak in a way that makes it sound like it was still cool to abuse people or emotionally, physically um, psychologically or anything it just triggers us because <laughs> we can't we're trying to forgive but we just um sometimes it's like the ego of it all I guess that you still think it's something worth saving and we're past that point I guess because of the um effects that it's had on um, those who have been processed heavily yeah and raised in it right absolutely um, all right, you guys, here's our outro, and then Elvis will be on in five minutes. We'll see you guys there. Bye-bye, Alexis.